life in the 1950s, the 1960s, the 1970s, and up till now. Hello, y'all. I'm Diana Brienne. Well, I did a video called Television from the 1950s and 1960s. As y'all know, I am um, age 64, so I lived uh, in the latter 50s into the 60s. My childhood was mainly spent in the 60s and um, my teenage years in the 70s, my young adult years, then into the 80s and 90s and so forth. So I wanted to talk a little bit about my views of life in the 1950s. Well, I don't give advice, recommendations, information, suggestions. I just share with you my viewpoints on different topics as is with this one. And life in the 1950s was pretty simple from what I was told and from what I can remember. I, I was born in a hospital, but my uh, parents lived on a farm, so my first beginnings was on a farm. I don't even know, I think we had a television, but it had probably one channel with rabbit ears. It was one of those brown box televisions that kind of sat on something and then um, like a metal thing, a metal rack. And then I remember in the early 60s, I remember one of the first TV shows I got to see was the Beverly Hillbillies. And we didn't have that channel because we only got one channel with rabbit ears. And so I remember seeing at a friend's house. And back then we had black and white television, but the store was selling this plastic with multicolors on it. And you'd put it over your TV and it you know, we thought that was so cool. It made it look like color television, but most people didn't have color television, although I think it was created around that time. So most people had rabbit ears. Um, probably everyone did at that point, and it was black and white uh, television shows for the most part. I think later in the 60s um, came colorized television. Um, shows were family-oriented. Families sat down for dinner each night. Usually there was one car in the garage, not two. Most people dealt with one car at a time. And so I, most people in the 1950s and 1960s, at least the ones I grew up in, small towns, um, most people went to church on Sunday and they put their best Sunday clothes on. Most people had a garden if they had a yard and they exchanged their fruits and vegetables, whatever they didn't grow, maybe their neighbor grew. So they would kind of, you know, exchange things back and forth. Um, we had a, a fruit cellar. We had, you know, we, uh, people still canned a lot of their food, um, you know, where they would get the jars and boil the jars and they would can whatever they had in their gardens. Um, most food was homemade. Very few people ate out at restaurants unless it was a big celebration. I don't remember really eating out at a restaurant until probably about 1970. You know, maybe before, but not much. I mean, it was like an adult thing. Kids didn't really go to restaurants much. And people did sit down at night to a family dinner. Um, people watched their money. Um, people uh, took their time with each other. They sat out on the front porch and the back porch for entertainment, talking to each other, telling stories, talking about their day, talking about people that they knew. Um, people really, really, really um, enjoyed each other. They enjoyed each other's company. They went visiting with each other. They went to each other's homes. Um, it was called Visiting or Company. I did a video on that. I don't think I put it up yet. And so that's how the 50s and 60s were. Um, television started to change around 1969, 1970, and it went from just the typical sit sitcom comedies that, uh, you know, like I Love Lucy and all those wonderful family-oriented ones to what I consider harsh reality. Um, and to me, it wasn't comedy, but it would be labeled comedy. I don't even need to mention those shows. And so there was a big turn in television about 1970. And all those wonderful shows like Green Acres, Beverly Hillbillies, Petticoat Junction, those went off the air. And one of my favorites was Hee Haw. People um, really took their time with each other. They were thoughtful. It was really a great time to grow up in, even though there was a lot going on in the world at that time. But from a child's perspective, it was really a good time. You, I could go off and, you know, my mom would say, now just make sure you're home for dinner, you know, and I'd be gone all day. And it was, it was pretty safe back then, you know, unlike today now, we don't, you know, we don't do that. And, um, um, but then it was so different. 
And in the 70s, you know, I was a teenager then, and we would ride around in the car together, you know, look and see what was going on. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't, you know, I grew up with a rotary phone and party lines and rabbit ears. Rotary phones, party lines, and rabbit ears. And, you know, the big old, uh, you know, phone. And if you called long distance, it was very, very expensive. We didn't have unlimited calling like today. And the 70s, um, you know, I... I I don't remember microwaves or anything like that until the early 80s. I remember getting my first microwave, my first VCR, which was extremely expensive at the time. I think I paid like 500 for each of them. And um, I remember that microwaves, uh, the what I call walkie-talkie phones, where you can walk around the room, um, you know, you don't have to sit in one place. Those came out about the late 70s, where everyone was getting them, and it kind of had an antenna on it. Um, Let's see, because um, I know there's a lot of things like the microwave, the VCR came out early 80s, at least when I recognize it. The, the um, video recorder, I got my first one in the 80s. So I've been videotaping daily for about 40 years. And my first one was very expensive, about $2,500. And it was the big kind that you had to wear a backpack on your back to charge the big, big, big battery. And it had VHS tapes in it, but it was really the first handheld camera that got sound as far as I remember and that was in the early 80s um, it might have been the 70s that those came out I'm not sure and the 80s television and music really started changing because there was a lot of disco in the mid to late 80s the Bee Gees Donna Summer those were wonderful I still dance to those music <laughs> we had platform shoes bell bottoms um, I, that was more the platform shoes came later in the 70s that bell bottoms the midi mini midi coach came in the very early 70s um, late 60s the mini skirt the midi skirt the maxi skirt and they made a coat that you could zip and uh, it had three different levels to it and um, bell bottom pants um, uh, just you know I'm trying to remember all the different phases um, I think there was a gremlin car a gremlin it looked like a little box car that drove around <laughs> I think one of my friends had it. And if you were really, really lucky, you got to drive your parents' car to school when you turned 16. And so, yes, I remember all that. And I remember um, in the 90s is when I got my first, well, I didn't get my first, well, yeah, I did get my first cell phone and it was the kind you plug into the charger. It was $25 a month for 30 minutes of local time. And my husband and I had that. I, he had that for me for safety. That was like in the early 90s. And I remember my father-in-law was one of the first people I really knew who had a cell phone and he had it for work. And those were pretty big, pretty big. You had to kind of carry them around. They weren't like little things that you just stuck in your purse. You kind of carried them in a separate kind of um, bag. And so I think those kind of came out in the later 80s. And, uh, but I really didn't get my own cell phone, cell phone until around 2000, maybe it was 2001 when we came back from Europe. Well, actually I had a cell phone over in Europe in about 1998, I think it was about 1998 is when we got our first real actual cell phones, kind of like the flip phones. And then when we came back, we waited a year because we didn't know that there was unlimited talk time like, you know, there is today. And we got ours at about 19 or 2000, 2001, that time period, and had one ever since. <laughs> and all of those have changed so much from the flip phone to everything that we can do on our phones now. It is amazing technology. You know, going from the 1950s with rabbit ears and one TV channel to 400 channel satellite dishes. Um, cars that talk to you, GPS systems. I mean, we had a map. And if we went across country, we joined AAA and had the trip tick. I remember going across country with my mom and I would flip the trip tick so we would know where we were going. You know, we had maps. We didn't have a voice activated instruction telling us what to do. And now there's cars that drive for you. I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing how cars have changed. Cars have changed dramatically. Back when I was little, we didn't have seat belts and we had the side vent on the front window. We rolled our windows up and down. We didn't have air conditioning. 
um, you know, uh, it was amazing. And, you know, we didn't have airbags or anything like that. Medical technology, it's amazing. I mean, we could go on forever about all that we've learned and, the, and, and what doctors can do now and just all the things that we've learned medically. So life has changed dramatically since I was little. And so much of it, it is wonderful. The technology, the blessings of a new technology, a technology be, can, can be used for good or it can be used for not good. It depends on how you use it. The same way with the internet. There was no such thing as the internet. Um, I remember it was in the mid 1990s and my husband came home and said, uh, this guy got internet. And I said, what's internet? And then he told me, and then I said, what's email? I didn't understand the concept of email and internet. And then when we first got internet, of course, or, you know, internet, we had to use the dial up with all the noise in the back of the phone and it would block the phone line. I don't know if y'all remember those or not, but uh, yeah, so much, so much. And I know that there's a lot more I could talk about all the changes throughout the years, but I thought I would just come on here and share a few that um, I grew up with and the things that I miss. I miss the closeness of people sitting on the front porch. Now people even sit at the dinner table staring at their phones and even in church, they'll be looking at their phones. Um, people are so disconnected in so many ways and yet they're so connected. They're able to connect all over the world through their phone, which is wonderful. But in person, a lot of people have become disconnected um, because of that very same reason. And so I believe in being connected to the people that we love in person, as well as using technology to our advantage to stay in touch with the people that we love and care about um, through the use of technology. So I believe in using technology to our advantage, not to our disadvantage. And I, I, you know, I miss grandma's food. I miss well water. I miss spring water. I loved going to grandma's house. She had well water. I just loved it. I loved going out and getting bottled spring water from the spring. It was just wonderful, wonderful. Um, grandma had an outhouse, you know. She didn't have real indoor plumbing. She had some indoor plumbing, but it was from well water. And they heated their house with um, the, the, I don't know what you call them, some kind of stoves in the kitchen you'd put coal in. <laughs> So even the heating was different. We didn't have air conditioning. We had a fan and that was it. So we sat out on the porch a lot during the summer. So I know I'm probably missing a lot of, of um, a lot more that I could be telling you. And, but I thought I would just come on here and reminisce a little bit about from the 50s, 60s, 70s and beyond. From my house to yours, may God bless you. And I hope to talk to you soon again. I hope you like, share, subscribe to all five of my channels. Links are pinned at the top of the comment section below. If you connect with me, I will likely connect with you as well. Hope to talk to you then. Bye-bye.